Hello everybody, Roger here and welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. So today I'm going to do a review of a book I read recently called Eliza and Her Monsters and it was just an awesome, awesome read. So the story revolves around Eliza, a smart, a geeky, socially awkward and shy high school senior who is the anonymous creator of a popular webcomic called Monstrous Sea. Now, her online alter ego is Lady Constellation, and only uh, Max and Emmy, a couple of uh, friends whom she's never met online, know her identity. So this way, Eliza is basically living two separate lives. In her real life, she's more or less invisible, whereas online, she is a star. And, oh, and her uh, parents are also totally clueless about how famous their daughter is and how much money she earns from what they refer to as her little hobby. So this new guy named Wallace moves into town and lo and behold he is a huge and I mean huge monstrous sea fan. He's also quite introverted and suffers from social anxiety, so uh, so him and Eliza kind of hit it off pretty well. Now, as Eliza and Wallace's relationship deepens, and, uh, and there's no insta-love here, just a kind of a nice gradual slow burn, Eliza becomes more and more con conflicted about whether to tell him that she's the webcomic creator. He is, after all, a major fan. Hell, he even writes monstrous sea uh, fan fiction. But Eliza decides to keep it a secret because, hey, what could possibly go wrong? Well, as we learned from the blurb, Eliza gets outed and the entire world, well, at least the monstrous sea world, now knows the identity of the infamous Lady Constellation. And in a flash, her entire world turns upside down. Now, at first glance, this might not seem like a big deal. Okay, you might think, so people on the internet find out the author of a webcomic. Big deal. Well, it actually is a big deal. Eliza is basically the equivalent of a Hollywood celebrity in the fandom with millions and millions of followers. So the big reveal leads to some major fallouts in Eliza's life, including relationship blow-ups, uh, excessive anxiety, and the onset of panic attacks. So, as the slow story slowly unfolds, we figure out that the title of the book, Eliza and Her Monsters, isn't just about the monsters that she creates for her webcomic, but it's also about her anxiety, doubt, fear, uh, the expectations of others, uh, the way she alienates herself from her family and the outside world. So in this way, the novel does touch on several serious issues as well, such as depression, uh, anxiety, panic attacks, suicidal thoughts, betrayal, as well as the courage to be oneself. Now, in the end, it was encouraging to see the positive changes in Eliza, that Eliza goes through throughout the story and how she comes out of her shell by the end of the book. Now, I could really relate to many of the things that Eliza was going through, as I was also extremely introverted and anxious through my high school years, and, uh, and I had my share of monsters as well. But this is probably the case with many of us, or I should say most of us, as those high school years can be difficult for most people in one way or another, regardless of whether you're shy or outgoing. Now, the author really has a knack for bringing her characters to life. Uh, Eliza, Wallace, Max, Emmy, uh, her brothers, Church and Sally, all of whom were nicely fleshed out, uh, vivid and relatable, and most of all, likable, making this book uh, accessible to many people. The characters of Eliza and Wallace, however, were especially complex, and I enjoyed learning more and more about them, uh, leading to an understanding of their motivations as the tale unfolded. I, uh, I did also love all of the secondary characters and appreciated how no one took on a minor token kind of role in this book. Every character was important to this story. Now, the story was told through a variety of different formats in the novel. Uh, there was uh, inter internal dialogue, a uh, conversation, conversation via writing, uh, chat windows, uh, text messages, screenshots of forum messages, and even artwork. All of this really added an element of realism and fun to the story. I'm so glad that I ended up purchasing uh, the hard copy version of this book because the gorgeous art was phenomenal. 
From an artistic point of view, Eliza and Her Monsters is an uplifting and encouraging story about fandom, art, about going out into the world and creating something meaningful, which renders this emotional story incredibly relatable to anyone who creates or desires to create, or by anyone who enjoys interacting with fandoms, such as a Comic Con, Dragon Con, I think there's even a Fairy Con if I'm not mistaken. So it's a beautiful journey of a talented young woman who, once paralyzed by her monsters, is able to succeed in overcoming them and comes out shining at the end of the story. So the book was well written, uh, the characters meticulously developed uh, with a fresh and unique story. It's brilliantly plotted and an absolute joy to read. This is one of those captivating books that you could easily read over and over again and uh, discover something new with, uh, with each reading. So uh, needless to say, I absolutely loved this book and uh, I gave it five stars. And that is it for Eliza and her monsters. Uh, I will talk to you next time and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. <music>